Hello, my name is Claudia Ribeiro. I'm a project manager at Polis. Polis is the European network of cities and regions working on transport innovation, now with more than 100 members. I'd like to welcome you to this lecture of the massive open online course of the LEAD project, which focuses on zero emission zones for freight. This lecture will focus on the context, opportunities, challenges, and requirements to set up zero emission zones for freight, taking hints from the how-to guidance to support cities and countries considering freight and service deliveries in their decarbonization strategies, which has been drafted by Polis, Transport Decarbonization Alliance, and C40. Here's a brief overview of the agenda of this lecture. So we'll go through the context, the trends, solutions, then we'll go into the guide that I mentioned earlier, pitfalls to avoid, and then how to devise zero emission zones for free. Cities are witnessing an exponential growth with more than half of the world's population now living in urban areas. This increase, paired with the rise of on-demand last-mile logistics, intensifies urban challenges such as air and noise pollution, greenhouse gas emissions, congestion, and traffic safety. Air and noise pollution are associated with a high number of premature deaths worldwide. This particularly affects the most vulnerable, as lower-income neighborhoods reach levels of NO2 concentrations up to 50% higher than in wealthy areas although car ownership is lower in these areas. This is evidenced by the figure of the Kudiozen project that took place in Brussels and is shown here on the slide. Low and zero emission zones are popping up to address this matter as a response for mass transit and personal mobility. Trucks correspond only to 2% of vehicles but are responsible for 22% of road transport CO2 emissions in the European Union. This figure highlights the need for a tailored plan to the freight sector by devising specific zero emission zones for freight. As mentioned in the first lecture of this course, zero emission zones are the natural evolution of low emission zones, with increasing popularity to help cities meet their climate neutrality targets. In fact, low emission zones should gradually be converted into zero emission zones. Zero emission zones for freight are areas in cities where zero emission delivery and freight transport vehicles may enter. The urban environment can benefit greatly from zero emission zones for freight. As mentioned before, they can assist cities in achieving crucial objectives, including less traffic, cleaner air, and lower greenhouse gas emissions. The creation of these zones can also send a strong message to automakers, encouraging them to quicken the mass manufacturing of zero emission freight vehicles, while also sending a message to the wider transport sector to step up to the challenge and contribute to the green transition. Also, to ensure smooth access to emergency services, these vehicles can be identified via sticker and granted access both to low emission and zero emission zones. I will only briefly touch upon the main challenges and trends affecting last mile um, on demand logistics, as the previous lecture focused on this exact topic. So, to build upon this lecture, I would like to just mention. Um, that these trends and challenges that affect the sector are related with an increased phenomenon of urbanization, increasing demand from freight, creation of consolidation centers, and the logistics ball. While planning for the implementation of zero emission zones for freight, one must be aware of potential fit pitfalls. It is essential to steer away from the notion that simply replacing fossil fuel vehicles with zero emission vehicles is enough. In fact, not every single item can be carried in an electric vehicle either. The approach to the greening of freight needs to be multidimensional and focused on a system reinvention rather than a simple shift in engines and vehicles. This shift needs to be accompanied by complementary measures, such as a set of charging infrastructure and microhubs, and then among many others. On the matter of microhubs specifically, later in this course, you will have the chance to hear about the one created by Madrid in its lead living lab, which has reduced the distance travel for deliveries by 33% in the area. It is also essential to guarantee engagement of all types of logistic operators, such as logistic hub operators, users, transport operators, and small and bigger businesses, as these have different needs and abilities to adapt to new rules. One should also be mindful of potential negative impacts in employment levels. 
So in addition to the restriction of entering the vehicles to the assigned zone, other measures and solutions need to be implemented to fully devise the solutions of the freight. The first obvious step is to promote the electrification of delivery fleets. Secondly, this should be accompanied by the increased usage of light electric vehicles, such as cargo bikes, for mass deliveries, contributing to modal shift. On the other hand, urban consolidation centers are facilities that collect and distribute items from various factories, warehouses, and other production locations to nearby businesses or even individuals, and are located to the areas they serve, close to the areas they serve, actually. Lastly, um, of our delivery can be a short-term solution to just logistics, distribution zones, and congestion charging zones, which give businesses the choice to receive deliveries outside of regular business hours when there are fewer vehicles, pedestrians, and cyclists in city centers. So, knowing this, how can we go about devising a zero emission zone for freight? Transport Decarbonization Alliance, C40, and POLIS prepared a first-of-a-kind handy guide inviting relevant stakeholders to consider the advantages of creating zero emission zones for freight in and around cities. The guide comes to several significant conclusions. First, even though urban freight accounts for a disproportionate amount of air pollution and CO2 emissions, few cities and nations have developed a vision for zero emissions freight operations. Second, well-designed zero emissions zones for freight promote more effective logistics by lowering the number of trips, for, for instance. They also promote a better mix of transportation methods by employing shared cargo bikes or light electric vehicles for last deliveries, and the conversion to zero emission for the remaining vans and trucks. Further, creating a zero emission zone for freight is a difficult procedure with several stakeholders. Owners and operators of freight trucks can range from large corporations to one-person businesses, as well from craftspeople to experts who offer maintenance services, and one needs to account for this variety of stakeholders. The report also stresses the importance of understanding the interests, demands, and worries of the many stakeholders to foster cooperation and develop efficient regulations and incentives to manage these zones. Additionally, zero emission freight vehicles should be given preference for zone accessibility, time windows, as well as through subsidies and other incentives. These might actually speed up the transition to zero carbon transportation overall and help kickstart the market for zero emission freight vehicles. Finally, policies may, may also be needed to coordinate between several uh, governmental tiers, neighboring uh, regions, and even entire countries. The figure shown in this slide was published in the briefing update on zero emissions and development progress in cities by ECCT and provides a global overview of implemented and planned zero emission zones and different variants throughout uh, through July 2022. According to the criteria laid out by ECCT, four cities are pioneering in implementing zero emission zones in the 2023 to the 2050 timeframe. The figure also focuses on zero emission zones for freight, with two cities in the world having implemented it, and about 30 cities planning to introduce one. The two cities that have already done this are Rotterdam and the Chinese city of Shenzhen. The Netherlands is at the forefront of the movement to create zero emission zones for freight. By 2025, they aim to have 30 to 40 cities to have installed and standardized zero emission zones for freight. This goal follows the Dutch National Climate Agreement, which mandates a large reduction in CO2 emissions for the logistics industry. The nation has also created a unified national criteria for zero emission freight. These state that to enter any city with zero emission zone for freight, all new delivery vans and trucks purchased after 2025 must be zero emission vehicles. Additionally, it establishes a phase-out schedule for existing fossil fuel commercial vehicles with truck and van transition periods ending in 2029 and 2027, respectively. So, the upcoming lectures will focus on specific cases of front-runner cities which are already in the process of successfully implementing zero emission zones for freight. So, if you have any questions about this video, do not hesitate to reach out. If you want to read more about the topic, you can have a look at the uh, list of additional reading materials I've prepared for you.
Thank you and until next time.